Hey everybody, welcome to another edition of the Block Party Academy where we teach you from the ground up the foundations and fundamentals of playing offensive line. Today we're flipping the script, we're going on the other side of the ball, we're looking at defense and particularly defensive stunt. Let's tag in. Welcome. My name is Sam Parker. I'm the offensive line coach and run game coordinator at Ferris State University. Um, and this channel is a, you know, education based channel to teach my guys offensive line play as I see it. Uh, right now we're in the middle of defensive breakdown and talking defensive ball and how we categorize and identify things. Um, and you know, I was thinking of just doing, you know, trying to combine these, but there is so much information and, and a lot of stuff that to cover that we will be breaking this down. The previous one was front, um, in which we did miss a front that I will add into this one. Nothing major, but something to continue and go over. And this one is, is talking about the stunt, what the defensive line is doing once the ball is snapped. The next episode will be the blitz. The one after that will be the coverage, doing a coverage episode, um, at least through the lens of the offensive line and generic coverages, identifying two high, one high, no high, um, different alignments and kind of piecing it together. Um, I'm definitely not somebody to be an aficionado of coverages, so uh, you're better served to go on another YouTube channel for that one, but it will be enough and in depth enough to match this breakdown information. So those are the next ones. And then I think I'll do a fifth one, just going through a game. You know, we played Montana last year and they gave us so many fronts and movements and all sorts of stuff that I think it's really beneficial to kind of cruise through that game and, and, and talk ball or just find some other tape to discover. So, like I said, this is part two in this this kind of series of going through um, defensive breakdowns. So let's tap in. Let's go right into um, the the stunt. Okay, so stunt wise, all right, defenses don't have a ton to play around with, um, but it's how they can manipulate these movements. Okay, so the first one. The first two that we have are slant and angle. So an angle means they're going away from the strength. A slant means you're going to the strength. So S for strength, angle away, and how we categorize it. So angle, they're always heading towards the boundary. Um, a slant, they're always heading towards the field. And then we have a pinch in and out. A pinch means that they are coming in, and an out means they're coming out. So uh, you might be wondering, like, well, you know, what if it's a one guy doing the, the movement? If it is one guy that is doing a slant or angle, it, you know, if there's a blitz with it, we will tag it. If not, it is determined that he is doing the best rush maneuver he has, whether it's run game or pass game. And then we have... Uh, a text, okay, of coming through here and then around, and then, an, so that's tackle first for text, all right, tackle here, and then X, meaning end through tackle around. So pretty easy, and oh my gosh, I do think I, yep, I did forget one, a major one, the gate. Okay, so gate is a middle twist all right middle stunt so we have a nose and a tackle here a gate he is hitting the center's hip and this one looping around so if you thought about it you know uh, at any point if it's two guys on the inside and they're 
looping, doing a pick and roll, as I will call it, just like in basketball, that is a gate, okay, a middle twist. If it's, you know, a two, you know, a D tackle and an end, it's got to be an X or a tax, all right? Those are all of the stunts that the defense can do, or the most popular, that's it, you know? So as confusing as it gets, it boils down to really those six. When they do get more exotic, you get these, or excuse me, those seven, including the gate. You get these isos where these guys are doing these big twists and an iso means that they are isolating one guy to go around two guys so an iso one and this is from our this is from the genius and the mastermind coach smith our defense line coach tesfa smith but he you know goes right down so it's one two three and four just like you're reading a book because it, it does get confusing when you're watching it on tape because there's one guy looping around two. Um, you know, I imagine it's how defenses feel about when we run GT. But so if it's the one guy, if it's number one, he is going around two. So you always know that if it's a one or a four, it's the end and he's coming back in. If it's a two or a three, it's a tackle and he's going all the way out. If you can see this three here. That tackle's going all the way around. And then here, all the way around. And then the only other one that they have is a, the only other two is a spy or a drop. A drop means that he is dropping into coverage or following somebody out of there. A spy means he's staring at the quarterback, um, whether he is within a couple yards of the line of scrimmage, but his eyes are on quarterback versus dropping into his, you know, his coverage assignment or whatever it will be. But that's it when it comes to actual stunts from a defense. Now, what makes this super confusing, right? As I can draw it up here, a team can have, oh man, I ran out of real estate real quick. A team can have, all right, if I draw up this side, there you go. they can split and run, you know, two different stunts on the same play. So they can have, a tex on one side and an X on the other side. They can run a gate on the interior with the guy looping around here, followed with an ISO four coming back around here. Like, tell me how chaotic that looks and even dropping in this dude. So some of the time the verbiage can get really long, but for the most part, Everything is boiled down to that. And how you label that is very important on there. So if, if it is a text stunt, we want to label text boundary or text field. So that way we can have, you know, have it labeled the way that we want to. If it is a, you know, a double stunt, so let's say it's a text X, that would mean text field X boundary. So however you label it or whatever, uh, keep it, Streamline, but for us, we will always start field two boundary. So the team can run, uh, you know, an ISO four coming back to the boundary and having somebody drop, which we will tag at the end. So we can have an angle drop NT. Um, you know, you can piece it together so that way you don't need to call everything the whole time. You know, if they're running, a, you know, a text double, so two texts, you're going to type in their text double. Versus trying to come up with a whole new name for a stunt. Well, it's Tex, Texas. Uh, we'll call this one Cowboy Hat. And then you, you know, so then your guys are good, like Cowboy Hat and, you know, and you're trying to piece it together. So I do think making it flexible enough and then putting the, the spots that they're going from and to is very important. Um, and now let's get into some tape and really breaking down. Oh, I got the blitzes on there. That's okay. We'll go into that next time. So, what does this look like? Okay. So, the first one that we want to show here is an angle. All right. The first one that we have, or that we, you know, the, the most rudimentary is slant and angle. Okay. I think everybody can comprehend that one pretty easily. So first, we're going to still go through and identify these fronts as we go along. This is a cub front, okay? 
We have three hands in between the B gaps. You know, even though this guy is a four I, because this guy is playing a three and a nose here, this is a cub front. Okay. So versus trying to call it something new because this guy's playing a four I, keep it simple. How many hands are between the B gaps? Linebacker alignment is a stack. So that's our first one that we've seen of this. So we have strong Mike Buck as we read it across. All right. And we have a nickel blitz here. And then look, this is an angle stunt. They're angling away from the strength back to the boundary. You can see all three defensive linemen move in unison. And it's also, too, why it's important to recognize these fronts is that seems to be a blitz indicator or a movement indicator with these guys all being shaded up and then stemming back to the boundary after the snap. So here is a slant. Okay. So first of all, right, we're making our ID triangle pre-snap. If I'm on the right side of the line, I'm thinking, okay, who has this gap, right? Who is playing this gap? And right off the hut, you can see this slant occur. So we have a slant. And if we want to tag it, you know, because it's really only one half. Well, let's see if this knows does it he does it late but if it's you know if it's one side we can put slant boundary and if i'm talking to you know my guys i'll say hey slant boundary meaning they're slanting to the strength they're moving to the strength which is the field and so slant boundary is what we're seeing here and the front is an under g Aligned on the guard, Mo. All right, only one linebacker in the box. Anytime that we see a five-man box as well, it's just a great indicator to know, okay, we should be seeing some sort of movement, especially if there's not two A-gap defenders. And thus, we have it right here, exactly what we see, a slant from both those guys coming into that point. And an excellent play. Okay, now let's see an out. So an out, all right, you know, very rarely will you see one out of a, a you know, a quad front, you know, or something like this. I don't know if I even have, I don't know if we've ever seen that, but certainly a good one to see it out of is this Indian front where these two guys are coming into here, all right? Also pre-snap, look at what we're seeing from the, the second level defenders here you know this is an indian front and whether we want to label this safety in the box or not is up to us but this would be an indian split or if we let it go long enough you know the happy feet from the linebacker here and how close he is proximity that's normal we can also label that a mon if we want to, um, which I would advocate here because these guys are pretty square and in really good alignment from that split here. And then labeling that Mon, you know, lets us know that's a seven man box and exactly what we're seeing. And so now we're getting that out. So look at the two defenders here. They both spike out. And now with the overset from our center and how they cross read it. He goes behind, and we do manage to get it, you know, pretty picked up. We're just a bit off, and somebody is able to get a hand. Oh, yeah, it wasn't even the inside threats. It's this guy over here. Hell of a play on his part and a pick. So, again, an out, two D tackles, working out, working wide, working to their spots. So... First of all, the, the next stunt that we have is a pinch, but primarily I wanted to show a cheetah front. I forgot to show that in the last one. I think I skimmed right over or deleted the clip by accident. But a cheetah front is only one defensive lineman hand in the dirt between the B gaps with two defenders in five techniques or outside of the tackles. So this is, you know, right now it's third and 10 in this clip. And so this is a pass, you know, situation. 
and we're getting pass all the way. And also, the stunt that we're seeing with both of these defenders stemming to the B-gap is a pinch. So you can see how this can happen from a bunch of different fronts, right? So the previous one, this team, you know, can run a pinch where these guys stem in, right? So they can do it out of a four down. We can say that's a pinch, right? Where they're pinching everything in. Here, we can say it with these guys pinching in. This is a front that does not have an out with it. Like there's no way that this D tackle can run here out, right? That would be a slant or an angle based on which way he's going. But you can see just a pinch. Guys pinching into the line, cramming it up. So now let's get into some of you know these movements in twists. So twist is two guys, okay? So it could be those two, it could be those two, or it can be these two on this clip, disregard 47. <laughs> so it's these two, right? So if it's an interior twist, we're, we call that a gate. And specifically because the nose is, or the, one of the D tackles is picking the center while the other one rolls over top, okay? So when it's a middle twist between the D tackles, it's a gate. So here's a great look at it, right? Our center is coming back on a pin to this D tackle and then watch 94. He feels a double team, presses into the center's hip, and then see the D tackle roll over the top. And I, I mean, I could probably do an entire friggin' episode on just the gate. It's like the number one stunt teams love to play against us. And we've got some great clips of our center getting his friggin' head rocked on some of this. This is a pretty generous one, all things considering. But you can see why it's a little bit difficult, right? Because this guy's pressing into the hip and these guys think it's a good double team. Uh, but for our center, that's a that's a real tough one with this guy come over the top. So pick and roll on the center. This is a gate. Gate, gate. Teams love to run this. If I get back to the Indian front here. But this is like the most common, right? That's why you put these guys so close for the gate. So when a center does take his zone steps here, this D tackle can drill his hip. And then as this guy reads it, it's stem over the top. And what will happen is this guard thinks he's getting great push, but he's really knocking his buddy out. And this guy will close down his gap and go forward where there will be, you know, there's two guys at the point of attack if we ran it here. And now this guy is coming home for free. So it's a, it's a great stunt. It's a great stunt and a zone beater stunt. And it, you know, really tough on gap scheme as well. But, you know. Well, I got no butts. I mean, it's just a really good stunt. <laughs> it is susceptible into that weak side gap. If you could see it from here, right? Like, who's in this space? Nobody, because the D tackle went over the top. And if you, you know, don't have your head on a swivel, look at what can happen when somebody gets in space onto that. So it is a little bit dangerous. If you have a, a guy that can take advantage of the weak side, um, and it's specific that weak side A gap, you can get it home. Okay. So now we're talking about attacks. Okay. And really too, it, it depends on how you want to label these guys. Um, here they're in a, you know, what would be a tilted cheetah front. All right. With how, you know, they're aligned. There's a couple of ways. I think this is a really cool front to kind of talk about because we have a nose but we have two hands between the B gaps, right? But we can't label this a, you know, what would be an under G because this guy is head up. So this would be an under load. And pre-snap with this guy walked up, I really like that call of saying it's an under load with, by strength. Um, but simply put, this is a G to front, right? This is a three down that they're running in this alignment here too. And why I would say an underload, it's probably the only time they're doing this. But look at the stunt they're doing, right? They are running attacks out of a three down. 
if you want to, and it could be a gate too, however you want to determine it. If, you know, you're saying these are two D tackles out of an odd front. I always like saying it's always a, a tax or an X, right? Keeping it, you know, uniform, not trying to give a third option for guys. But this is exactly what a tax is designed to do. A tax is tackle first and around. So when your tackle goes first, we call this guy the knifer. Any guy that's the first penetrator or the dude that's looking to do this or this, that is the knifer. So here, you know, and the big thing is you need to stop the knifer. The looper can come free and you can see the time that this guy has to get out of the pocket. But really, by these guys holding up this dude allows him to escape here. You know, the looper, you have time to get rid of the ball, you know, react, do stuff. If, the, if we cut the knifer for free, right, if both of these guys made the same mistake to go after the looper, seven would be there much sooner and much cleaner. And he still is almost impacting it with us not getting, you know, where we need to be. So now let's see it with a double. So here, you know, Michigan Tech is in an outlaw, but now what we call a cub front with a drop mic. And now look at this. They're running a tax double. So we always want to put, like the previous one's a text boundary. Here it's a text double, two texts. Text, T, tackle, first and around, T-E-X. I love, I absolutely love whoever invented calling it that because A, it alerts you to who's first, right? Tackle. B, the second letter is telling you that the end is coming around there. And at the the X of it is exactly what they're trying to do is create this X, right? They're trying to switch responsibilities. One guy is starting off here. This guy is starting off here. They are going to cross paths, okay? And really on a straight line, it's there. So I think it's really, really, really clean, smart uh, way to categorize and just whoever invented that, you know, that that phrase and terminology is a genius. And the thing to note on tax is, right, a really good tax, a really good, this guy's not rushing the ball, okay? He is headhunting the dude that is oversetting and eyes on, you know, this guy coming through there. Our tackle's really good and our guard's really good to pass that off and exchange it. And we do have a clean pocket for one of these kinds of throws and catches. So now an X, an X means end is first and tackle around. This is pretty common against uh, like a zone read team, like how we are. Um, I, I, I want to say Northwest Missouri State has this called backwards, but, you, you know, slicing this guy down here and this guy looping around to the running back side is a really, really, really good way because he does this, the quarterback's got to pull it, and now this guy comes over the top to take advantage of it. So it can be very dangerous though, right? Because if this guy doesn't secure that or sprint or is well-disciplined or anything to that point, your end is coming out and around here. So it's really feast or famine when it comes to that. But here we're seeing it into the boundary. So we have the end spiking into the guard and now the tackle looping around into, you know, a new B gap here. You know, and when we talk about ID triangle and what defenses are doing, you always have to have the well, you know, maybe it was a formational deal that they saw. Maybe they got the call in wrong, but definitely something's off here because this guy has the B gap, and maybe he's trying to slice late into the A gap, which maybe he's doing. And now this guy has the B gap, but now this is pretty exposed because that tackle did that. So again, that cheetah front that we're talking about, and here's an X out of a cheetah front, all right? And this is kind of what you see out of an X, right? Look at 50 set up or tackle here. Swipe back in, and now we have 
uh, you know, the defensive tackle looping all the way around here. So this is a pretty chaotic one. If we break down the front on this one, this is a cheetah, Mo, I mean one linebacker in the box, and they are running an X field with a boundary pressure. And I can't wait to go over the blitzes and how easy and awesome clean they are to, to discuss. But, you know, all of this is for not when you get a guy like that in your roster at some point. So here we're going to see, you know, some drops. So those are all of the stunts a defense of line can do. Um, the other thing to note is when we do get into blitzes, and teams start doing that from second level, we will put that in the stunt category. So if a team brings their mic in and their end around and we're like, that's a tech stunt, they're just doing it with the mic, versus calling it something else, we can call it tax and then tag M in there, meaning Mike is doing it. Um, we can also just leave it as a tax and based on the blitz, which it would be a middle five, middle four, Tax, we know tax field. We know that that's you know, okay. The pressure and the dude's looping around to that spot. So just by how you how we put it in there, we can always know. And the other thing too is like when it comes to all of this breakdown stuff, like you want to have it. You know, I always think of like the the periodic table where it's all of this information, and you know they have the. Oh my gosh, I am this I am out of my element right now talking about science in any capacity. I think I got like a 13 on the ACT in this. Too much information, but I am so bad at science. But let me keep rolling on it. It'll be a good comedy. But the periodic table, so when you look at, you know, all of those up there, they have all of the elements that are put in them and the amount of uh what electrons and protons and neutrons and the you know the the exact elements and how they piece together and so you can identify looking at h2o um you know hydrogen was two two times hydrogen and then oxygen right so like versus being that literal to know where it stands on the periodic table and all those elements it's water right and the same goes for this you have this giant periodic table of all this literal data. At the end of the day, we can, just like how we use the English language and, you know, have our slang and our normal talk versus our, you know, what's grammatically correct and what is written to be correct, you know, to make it a fluid conversation. So with that being said, when I say like we can tag it like this, that's for the coaches. So if I tell a guy, and like when we're talking about, these kind of uniques, like, uh, you know, one of our players doesn't need to know, you know, tax field angle boundary. He's got to know where he's at, that ID triangle, that very specific thing. It's my job to communicate to him, you, exactly where those pieces are. So if I'm playing right side, I can identify if this is a tax or an angle. And on the left side of the line, I can identify if this is a tax or an angle. And if I can do that, then I, you know, we can all five of us work in harmony and not have to worry about it. And so um, that's kind of what I mean by when I keep saying like, oh, we can label it like this. We can label it like that. And it does change week to week or not week to week, but you change up stuff, you know, for certain defenses. Um, when we play Michigan Tech, those guys move around and they've got dudes that we think are defensive ends or are playing linebackers that are, you know, bouncing around. So it can get confusing. So as a staff, you just have to come to the determination of like, how are we labeling this? And then how are we going to teach it? And to be honest with you, we're going through all of this stuff. Normally a team has, you know, a hand, like three or four stunts they're going to do three or four, two or three blitzes, three or four fronts. Um, you know, which all pieces together, if I was really going to piece it together, you've got like four fronts and then out of them, you got base or a stunt or a blitz. Right. And so that's pretty much what you're teaching the guys. So it's 12 different things max per week. And some of those <coughs> you're letting them know this is, <coughs> excuse me, this is on third and long. This is on third and short. This is goal line. And so. It does streamline and it does become much easier 
And then from there, you can, you know, shape how you're calling it. But this is the general nucleus of all of that. OK, so last element of this here are the drops. OK, so here we have a drop from the defensive end into the boundary. So the front is an even, meaning that we have two twos. Mo, meaning one linebacker in the box. And pre-snap, I'm thinking, okay, what the heck is going to happen over here? There's a lot of space. And we see that it is an angle immediately. All right, protection should be slid the other way here to combat this. You can see all the guys that are over here that we should be sliding to. <clears throat> so it's an angle and with a drop uh, uh, defensive end here. And then last here, and this one's great because this is, you know, this is as chaotic as, as Montana was. It's third and eight. I want to say game on the line on this one. They're in a cheetah front with stack linebackers that are creepy. Okay. So we have <coughs> a middle five pressure with a spying, well, he's really spying nose tackle and a drop defensive end. And this is just really good simulated pressure stuff. So how these guys are reading this, okay, from Montana is swing, right? So running back swings, he is trailing, okay? <clears throat> and then these guys are reading, so center sets to him. He is now going to spy, and now these guys are able to pick apart the offensive line right here. You can also do this reading, uh, you know, blocks. But these guys get to that point, and we cut this dude for free, who we think pre-snap, like, okay, you know, we're going to set to this guy and handle him, and this one is going to be man-to-man. -man. But essentially what they do is swap these two jobs based on reading where the running back is. So this is a really, really, really polished job and a really good defensive box. These guys made it to the natty, and, I mean, they were very talented and very fast and made for a lot of good tape. And maybe we'll watch. So those are the stunts that we've gone over. Um, there's not that many, but it's the fact that a defense can run two at the same time, right? They can run, you know, really three. They can run as many, you know, as many as they can handle with two guys over and over again, out of different fronts and different alignments and and really change things up. So um, it can be nightmare fuel, but by keeping it simple, like your ID triangle, what's on my side? What do I need to look at? You know, I'm looking nose to linebacker to linebacker. I'm looking at nose and linebacker, whatever it may be. But if you piece, and let me go back to this clip here, all right? If, if I piece this all together, right, if I'm the right guard, OK, this is fishy, right? Because they need to be gap sound. So who's playing the A? Who's playing the B? All right. Happy feet. I can recognize that these guys are unsettled the whole time. Look, the entire time, as soon as we get anything, they never settle their feet. They never lock into any stance. They show it and hold it late and then show it almost as we're tight, you know, timing up the snap. And you can see, you know, if I'm playing, we're playing man to man on these guys and letting this one cut free with this one on the, the, the blocking scheme here. But you can see, right, if I'm the right guard and I got my ID triangle, I can tell that this is coming, you know, and maybe it's, you know, not always going to be. But right now, based on the happy feet and his demeanor, this one's coming here. This one's going inside. This guy, I'm expecting to do this. He recognizes that and then drops. Okay. So it would be interesting to see how we handle it with like a six man slide. And this guy coming across to this one is probably how we need to pick it up. Um, but just by having your awareness to that puts you in such better spot and to not be, you know, delayed or coming out to it. So. Uh, appreciate you guys watching this one. This covers our stunt. 
The next one that we will go into is blitz, and then we will go into coverage, and then finally uh, looking at just full defensive clips and going from there. So appreciate you guys watching, and we'll see you in the next one. Thank you.